Just a quick video today to show you how you can create a French cleat or split batten with basic tools. And sorry for the sound qualities, my workshop tent has been getting a bit of a pummeling in the recent storms. Now the French cleat in today's video was basically so I could fix a headboard that I'd made for my daughter's newly redecorated bedroom to the wall. But you can use these battens basically wherever you need to fix something quite heavy to the wall because it's an incredibly strong fixing. You just got to remember to design a recess at the back of the kitchen unit or garage, cupboard, racking system, whatever it is you're creating to accommodate the thickness of the batten. Now what's so great about split battens is they're so versatile. You can make them from anything. I've got these three bits of wood lying around in my workshop, all of which would be fantastic bit of MDF or these two bits of plain redwood. I'm actually going to use this one here because it's a pretty good width at just under 95 millimeters. Now if you've got a workshop with a table saw it would obviously be quite easy to make one of these but if like me you haven't don't despair because you can also use the humble circular saw. Now you're going to want to set your saw to 45 degrees which I've done like that. And from that you can see that the angle that we want to scribe onto this piece of timber is something like that. And this is one of these slightly tricky bits of the job. You want to mark the centre of your bit of wood. And then you can mark onto that bit of wood your 45 degree cut. That's roughly the centre. And that's where we want to cut the bit of wood. I'm going to use the fence on my circular saw for this. And there are two jobs you want to do now. With the battery on the saw off for safety reasons, you want to set up, line up that blade so that it's cutting in as near as possible the right position on that line we just marked. That looks pretty good. So I'm going to lock off the fence at that point. Now the second thing we might need to do, which you might have seen me talk about in previous circular saw videos, absolutely critical with one of these things, to ensure that the blade cutting depth is at the right point. And we want that blade to be just poking out underneath the bit of wood we're cutting. So I'm going to release the cutting stop and just lower the blade like this so that we've got about half a tooth beneath the cutting surface. And now I can lock that off. Now I've got these boards, these hardboard sheets as sacrificial strips to try and protect my workshop bench as much as possible. You can see I have made a few mistakes in the past but it's generally unscathed from that massive wardrobe build you might have seen in my seven part video series recently. What these strips enable us to do now is literally clamp this bit of wood in position on the workbench so that we can start cutting. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start cutting here, get halfway across and move the clamps to behind the saw. With the angle of the blade set I can reconnect the battery. Now any of you who know about circular saws, plunge saws, will know that circular saws are not as efficient as plunge saws because they've got this large area that all the shavings, sawdust can get escaped from. I've actually found this Ryobi saw pretty good even with a improvised dust bag. This is actually an evolution dust bag attached to it. But what I'm going to do today instead is attach my vacuum, which makes it even more efficient. Now I do have to manually lift up this protecting guard before we start cutting, because otherwise the saw won't sit flat on the workbench. check and you can see we've got it pretty much bang on where we want it to.
A little tip, by clamping another piece to the end of the piece you're cutting, you can continue the cut seamlessly without the blade deviating. And that's it, just look how a little sawdust has been generated. And those are the two halves of our split batten. And with the batten cut, I can trim it down to size. I only need it to be a metre long, but it's much less fiddly to work with a longer piece and then trim it down when you're finished. To trim it down, I'm using this 18 volt circular saw, which I've been trying out. Now it's just a question of sanding down the uh, cut edges. Which I'm doing with a bit of sandpaper wrapped around a block of wood and you've got yourself a beautiful split batten. And then it was just a question of screwing one piece to the back of the headboard I made last week for my daughter's redecorated bedroom and which I recessed 18 millimeters at the back to hide the batten, marking the position of the second piece on the wall by drilling straight through the batten with an HSS drill bit and fixing to the insulated plasterboard wall with a couple of duo power 8 by 40 millimeter wall plugs. With that done, I could drop the headboard down onto the batten. The headboard sits flush with the wall and can obviously be slid along to micro adjust its placement. So that's it for today. I hope you found that useful. It's a bit like that wedge clamp video I did where you can make really strong tools from very basic materials. If you watch my videos regularly, I'm sorry I haven't been around much recently. I've been involved in one big project after another, including surprise refurb of my daughter's bedroom last week for her birthday. I'll post a video on that later this week. If you'd like to help support me as I make this content, you can either buy me a coffee or sign up to my Discord chat forum, where you can speak to me directly or one of the many experts on there to discuss all your DIY conundrums. I'll post links in the description below this video. And finally, if you're new to my channel, it would mean so much to me to have you subscribe. You can do that by clicking on the link here and don't forget to click the bell notification icon so you get notified of all my future uploads. See you soon.